Hey friends, welcome back to Audacity Training. This is the fourth part of a little series that I'm doing here on how to create a podcast. Check out the screen that I've got. This should look familiar. This is exactly where we left things in the last video. And what I want to do in this video is I want to bring the volume level of me speaking in that bottom track, I want to bring that up. I want it to match more closely the music. The music's a little bit louder. It's a little bit overbearing. And I want to balance that out. And show. so I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that in this video. First of all, let's come down here and select that bottom track. Now, when I selected it, it looks like both tracks are selected, but they're really not. This is just telling me that, remember, we turned on sync lock tracks. This means that if I move any one of these sections of audio, they're all going to move. They're going to stay in sync with each other. If you missed that last video, go back and check it out. And the clocks are just an indication that my tracks are synced together. This is good. This is what I want. But I want to put some effects in that bottom track. And by selecting that bottom track, the effects that I put on it are only going to go on that bottom track. Even though that top track looks like it's selected, it's really not. Uh, it's just telling me the sync lock tracks are active. So let's take a look at this bottom track here. Let's look a little bit closer at it. If we look at this long section of audio right here, you can see that my waveform, at least on the negative side, is a little bit larger here at the end. I have a little bit more dynamic range right there at the end of that section of audio than I do throughout it. The rest of the audio looks pretty good as far as dynamic range goes. This is where good microphone technique comes in. If you have good microphone technique, if you're staying the same distance from the mic, if you're trying to talk in the same uh, volume the entire time that you're recording, you get better audio. You get audio that may not need to be compressed. Remember, compression is a way that we bring the dynamic range closer together. In other words, these parts that have a higher peak, like right here at the end of this track, we want to bring that closer to what the rest of the track looks like. Because when we do that, it means that the listener isn't having to chase the volume all over the place to try and hear what we're saying. And we don't want them to do that. We'd rather do that right here before they even uh, get the audio from us. So a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I want to normalize this track. And when we normalize a track, we're actually looking at the peak value of the track and we're telling the track or the audio that we're normalizing, we're telling it to normalize to a certain peak level. So I've got that track selected. Let's come up to the effect drop down menu and let's go into volume and compression. And when we look at volume and compression, we're going to come down to normalize. And when we normalize, we're going to normalize in this case to a peak, peak amplitude of a negative 2 dB. Now, here's what you need to know about that. When we're looking at a piece of audio and, we, and we're telling it to normalize to a new peak amplitude, in this case, 2, 2 dB, it's going to look at the loudest spike in the audio and it's going to adjust it according to that. In other words, if I have one really loud part of the audio that's peaked out higher than the others, the rest of my audio isn't going to be peaked at a negative two, just that one high peak. That's going to be normalized to a negative two in this case. And you're going to see that in just a moment. Remove DC offset. Leave that on there. There's no DC offset on here. I did a video on DC offset. I'll put it wherever those videos go. There'll be like a little card if I remember. And you can go look at that too if you want to about what DC offset is and how I fixed it. I had some audio that had DC offset and I was able to fix it. So let's leave these as they are. We're not worried about uh, normalizing stereo channels. We don't have a stereo channel. But I'm going to click Apply, and you'll see a little bit of change here when I do. And again, it's only going, the only peak that's going to be around the negative two is that larger one. So let's click Apply. And that made our audio a little bit better. Let's play through a little bit of it and see if it kind of sounds more reasonable when comparing the music to the voice. So I'm going to press space bar and let's give it a listen. Welcome to the fake podcast. This is the podcast about nothing and I'm glad you're here. Okay, so what we've done by normalizing is we've brought the level of my voice 
up closer to match the level of the music that's playing. Again, we could do this a number of ways. We could adjust the volume slider and the track header. I don't like to do that. It's a little too arbitrary. Plus, I want to show you how to do these other things. And now, if you look at right here at the end of this piece of audio where I said the peak was higher, you can see that the peak is still higher. What I want to do in the next step is I want to put some compression on it, and I want to bring that peak level down to where it's more consistent with the rest of the audio. And when I put compression on it, I can leave it just like it is and compress a piece of the audio. I can select the entire section of audio and do it that way. But I'm going to compress the entire track. And again, it looks like I have both tracks um, selected, but I don't. Just the bottom track. So let's come back up to the effect drop down menu. Let's go to volume and compression. And let's open up the compressor. And this compressor is very good, actually. But remember, it's destructive just like all these other effects in the effect drop-down window. Let's keep our threshold at about a negative 13.8. I think that would be good. I don't remember what I was doing here last time. I'll keep our ratio at a 4 to 1. That simply means that for every dB over our threshold, Audacity is going to try and compress down 4 dB. That's all that that means. Look ahead is okay. Release time, 100 is good. We'll just leave it like that for the sake of what we're doing. Let me move it out of the way here a little bit. And when I click apply, you're going to see some things happen on that bottom track. You're going to see that that higher peak kind of squashed down. Is that a technical term? Squashed, crunched, um, minimized. You're going to see it minimized, and you're going to see overall the track is going to be more um, standardized overall. In other words, the level is going to look better. Remember when we're editing, we edit with our eyes as much as we edit with our ears. Both are important. So I'm going to click Apply. And you'll see that it took that track overall now, and it made it a little bit more consistent. It reduced that loud part, and it made the overall file a little more consistent in its level. Let's listen to a little bit of it again. Welcome to The Fake Podcast. This is the podcast about nothing, and I'm glad you're here. Okay, that's good. I like that. That'll work. Now, the next thing I want to do, and uh, how long are we going here? Let's do it in the next video. I want to export this as a brand new track. Well, should we do that? Should we export it as a brand new track, or should we export it as a file and then import it back in? How about we do both? In the next video, let's export these tracks as a brand new track with loudness luffs on it. Uh, to minus 19 since it's a mono track. And let's take a look at what that does. And then let's export it in that same video and uh, then import it back in and, and take a gander. Take a look at it, okay? That sound good? Are we having fun? All right. So uh, thank you for, again, watching this video. Let me save this real quick before I forget. And I'll see you in the next video. And we'll do the final step, which will be adding luffs or loudness, perceived loudness and making sure that our overall file meets the LUF standard for a mono podcast, which is minus 19 dB. So I'll see you in that video.